going on today. I've got a Ford F-350 Super Duty. I'm going to show you how I spray and blend out a solid white color. Before I show you how to get to this step with blending out whites, uh, up with the engagement. Like the video, comment, and uh, subscribe. The engagement is good for the algorithm. I'll push my channel out there. Trying to reach a thousand subs here as quick as possible. And uh, keep supplying some good videos and knowledge for you guys. So I'm in the booth here with my truck. Obviously, I'm trying to blow the dust off. It comes in the booth. I want to keep the booth dust free. So keep the dust out of the booth. F-150 Super Duty Pink Oat YZ Oxford White. Had a pretty nasty dent right there. We're blending it out. And I'll uh, Right now I got my waterborne cleaner, which is one third isopropyl alcohol and water. And that is as simple as just hose down your panel and wipe on, and wipe off. So the idea behind using this is just a waterborne cleaner. It gets any kind of dirt and organic materials. That's what they taught us in school. That's what the waterborne cleaner is for right after this. We'll hit it with uh, some solvent bar cleaner, which will get rid of your uh, grease and you know if you, if you touch it with your finger, there'll be a little bit of oil from there. It'll get rid of all that stuff. So here's the regs that I'm using: these torque towels, and for my solvent board cleaner, SX320. That's what I got in this one. I have the little bit of blue tape to tell me that's waterborne, and this one is my solvent. Get the whole panel wet, wipe it off, make sure you get in all your edges and stuff. You don't want to have any bits of oil or grease or whatever left over. Always use a clean rag. You'll even pull some dirt off and dust off if you missed it. Up next, back rag. Light pressure, and just Gently wipe it down. Don't put too much pressure because the tackiness in this rag can be left behind on the panel. What this is doing is just removing any loose lint or dust that's still on your panel or that could have landed on. Just making sure everything is clean. So we got it waterborne clean, degreased with the solvent board and tacked off. This is now ready to spray. For this job, I'm going to be using my Omni system solvent borne paint. Uh, I have no for this color. However, it's mixed. Mine is 5% white, and you have a butt match uh, YZ Oxford white on all four vehicles. It's pretty, uh, pretty nice that I have a, a good color match. I'll be using the uh, MP801, the primer or a sealer. I'm going to mix it as a sealer, and I'll lay that down over top before I put base coat on. The idea behind a sealer is to, I got that gray spot, uh, try and give it a uniform color so I don't have to put as much base coat on, uh, get better coverage that way using a white sealer. And that spot is finished in 400 grit as per the tech sheet say to finish uh, your primer spots at 400 when you're using Omni base coat. And the rest of the panels where I'm blending into it will be finished in 800. So seal it, you get a uniform color and it will help kind of level out and fill those 400 grit scratches, giving you a nice, smooth surface to put your base coat on. Another tip when you're spraying white sealer in a white base coat, under reduce at 5%. It's a pretty runny stuff, at least this Omni is. Um, makes it a little thicker, makes it cover a little bit better, so you don't have to put extra coats of white on. For me, there's my sealer, you can see how it's Really white here, but it's kind of a lighter gray right there. You won't even notice the difference really on the panel. Um, a little bit thicker, so this is a little bit of black in here and under reduced. Put one coat of this, and I can get away with two coats of base because well, my sealer and it's under reduced uh, just helps me get my coverage a lot quicker.
obviously I know I'm not going to get full coverage on my first coat of sealer. Another thing about making it thicker, the white stuff seems to run better. You put it on a little bit heavier to uh, get your coverage. And I'll show you uh, my thought process in spraying and kind of blending out my sealer is uh, when I get back in the booth. So you can kind of see how it's faded out, blended out. When I was doing it, I was coming across and I was letting the trigger go. I, many hours of the boot, letting the trigger go, kind of pulling away. I'm not trying to flick it. That can cause the material to be dry before it lands on the panel, it gets seedy and kind of sand piley. So I'm kind of just pulling away slightly and triggering off just to give it a nice feather. And another way you can do it, use your gun in an arc. Because if you know how your, it sprays, the top and the bottom of your, your gun will already be kind of like a built in blend. It already kind of fades out nicely. So you could arc it and then finish up the middle and still get a nice blend. But you can see how smooth that transition is. That's exactly what we're looking for. We're still going to tack it off for a good base coat. And she should be a nice clean job. So if you kind of blend it out like I do, where I'm just kind of pulling away and feathering it out with the, the trigger, I've had zero issues blending out that way. You can also use your gun as a blend. Just because the way it sprays, it, it kind of mists up. Because you'll kind of have like a oval pattern so when you spray just dead on you'll see that the top and the bottom kind of already fade out so when you do that arc you won't even know it's it's all it accomplishes the same thing it's just a lot easier to uh, to do because it's already kind of built into the gun um, I just go back and forth because I get a nice clean overlap each time or if you go on an arc and try to overlap and fill the metal you might put a little bit heavier in some areas and get risk some runs but practice. My next coat I'm going to put a one coat in this area to get that to cover better and on my second one I'm going to try and use the body lines and things to hide my color and I'm going to blend it as far as weight. The guy knows that it was damaged here I'm trying to put my color and blend it all the way out there to keep his eye off of what was damaged before so if your color isn't 100% you blend it it still doesn't look 100% right at least the blend is over here away from the damage area where he's going to check it out where you could blend it right there so the second coat i'm just going to blend it i already painted this box side so i could just spray all the way there there's still a gap there so really if your color is pretty close like this it doesn't really matter because there's a bit of a gap it'll be hard to tell the difference for most people always tack in between coat i got a dirty old rag that i'll tack everything off with first then I'll take my better rag and then tack everything off. I want this thing to be full of all the paint and sealer that was just kind of on for the overspray. I want it in the old rag so I keep this good one good for a little while longer. There's all that white sealer that was still on. It's in this dirty old rag. Grab my other one, tack it off again so I double tack everything. This is a work truck. It's got some gravel or ash on the bottom of the door. My next coat, I'm going to put some white on that because I had a spot up there I'm going to blend up. I think I'm going to, there's this guy right here, put some color on that. I'll probably blend it all the way up here. And again, blend it underneath that mirror. And I even see there's a little mark there. I might just blow some paint in because you won't even notice, but it's little things, little details of touching things up. The inside here where rocks have hit put a little bit of color. The customer might not even notice that it's been touched up, but it's just always about the little things to really make people happy. So I kind of went a little bit further than I did with the sealer and just kind of blend it up. Trigger a little bit, pull it back a bit and trigger it off just to feather it out all the way up. And the top one I can just go right across because it kind of feathers out. Here's what I mean. I kind of had it close, closer than I usually do. But you kind of see it fades up in there and it's more heavy in the middle. That's the idea of using your gun for a blend because that blend is already kind of built in and it'll fade out nicely.
trying to use body lines, shape of a door, door handles, mirrors, objects to help hide my blend as best I can. So I blended further away from where the damage was. Blend it up higher, touch up some rock chips, make sure it looks absolutely primo. I like to blend further because let's say there's damage on the fender and I have to blend into the door the other way. I've got color closer to that edge of the door near the fender so when I blend the other way in my computer I already have the color saved. I can just blend it to my own color which is going to be a perfect match every time. So clean out my gun, mix up some clear, when hammer on two coats of clear and uh, job should be done. I'll show you how it looks. I just want to remind you just don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs here. I'm sitting right now 377 so if I can get a subscribe from me, it'd be greatly appreciated. Like the video, comment, all that good stuff. Helps the algorithm. And I'd like to uh, eventually get this channel to, to grow a little bit bigger and give you more advice and as much knowledge as I can and show you how I do things. So just to try and reiterate my blending, I'm kind of going. And as I'm going, I pull back. I don't flick out. That'll cause seediness and sand piling. Pull back and let the trigger off. That's how I'm kind of trying to finesse my blend out that way. Or you could use the gun, but I mean this straight up and down, if you went and did this, you'd have a nice blend, then you kind of do it like that, sure. Might not work on metallics, a solid color, sure, just because your metallics will orient differently when you're spraying this way versus that, but a solid color, that'll blend out nicely. But yeah, practice, 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 and eventually you kind of get the hang of how to blend stuff and kind of find out uh, how you do it your way and just keep going at it. Here's the final product. Seamless blend. I mean, of course, every blend you gotta have a good color match to begin with. Well, you can kind of see on the paper where it blends up. You don't even see it. You can see where it blends out. It goes heavier and lightens up as it goes. You don't even see the color change. If there was one, not everything's gonna be perfect, but yep. That's the final product. There's that door that we just fixed. And there's the blending door, which is in mint, but she looks a hell of a lot better than it did before. So, feel free to uh, like, comment, and uh, subscribe. Just trying to chase that thousand subscribers, and uh, hopefully, uh, a couple more videos that you guys find helpful.